everybody. We're back with more Conan O'Brien. Still there? Act Still there. like you care. I Act care. Like no, I'm throwing it away. I'm throwing it away, man. I'm just throwing it away. Hey, we're back here with Conan. Show me what it's like to care about a guest. I, I want to know. Show me how to care about a guest. I'll show you. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to leave, Stephen, but the network has business to conduct, so I have to go. So we're going to take a break. But when we come back, and we will come back, I'm going to spend more precious time with Stephen Colbert. He means a lot to me, and I know he does to you. Now, let me ask you a question if we're gonna do this whole asking a question thing. My life's an open book, Conan. Well, I'm glad you said that because many relationships are in trouble right now. You're manspreading, by the way. I can see all of you. And <laughs> Not on this camera, only okay. on your well, camera. Guess what, on people my at camera. home don't know is that okay. the, your camera, you're getting the floor show. Yes. But nobody up there can see it. I am seeing everything and my hat's off to you. I'm very impressed. Thank you. A lot of relationships are strained right now. Uh -huh. Husbands and wives not getting along together. Yep. Uh, how about you? How are you never, guys doing? We've never been happier. Never been happier. Everything's great. Everything. Honey, would you come in here? She's too happy to come in. She doesn't want. She doesn't want to come in. You haven't laid eyes on her in three days, have you? I can't remember what she looks like, Connor. <laughs> how about Liza? How are you guys getting along? Um. Well. Uh, Liza and I are doing pretty well. We're doing pretty well. Uh, okay. She, there was a period there where it got bad, where I uh, took lipstick and drew a face on a broom, and I was talking to that for a while. Um, and we actually, our marriage flourished for a while okay. under those conditions. <laughs> the broom and I <laughs> were getting along so yes. well. She swept you off your feet. Okay. Okay. Thank really? You. Okay. Thank you. Anything. Huge Anything last. to fill time. Huge. It really is lovely. I mean, the thing is, my children are adults. They're being very patient with me. My youngest is 18. And that my oldest one's like, Peter is, what are you, 45? I'm not your oldest one. No, your oldest boy. Oh, he's 21. She's 21. My daughter is 24. 24, right? I don't she's going to be so mad that I had to guess. She was 20. She's 24. And we're kind of having to get out of their way. They deserve yes. to not have us on, you know, hovering over them all the time. Yeah. They're actually... Yeah. They're really quite self-actualized, much more, yes. more than I was at that age. And I just want to get out of their way, but we can't. I know. My son uh, is flourishing in this environment because he loves, he's 14. He loves, the, he loves uh, tech. So he's working on his computer. He's coding. He's talking to his friends. Uh, he's, he's, he's actually loving it. I mean, he hates that there's a pandemic, but he's doing really well. Both my kids are doing really well. They're very busy. Uh, they're not as needy as I am. I got a question before we go here, Conan. And I know, listen, I got to go because I'm, I'm doing Dick Cavett show right after this. Fantastic. Would you, would, have you ever been mad at Bob Dylan? Um, mad at him. Because I'm, I'm furious at Bob. I'm furious at Bob Dylan right now. Why? Because you know he did that 17-minute uh, yeah. JFK song. Yeah. in response to the coronavirus. Well, I thought it would be a perfectly lovely thing to do a song parody of Subterranean Homesick Blues. Yeah. And, and one of my head writers wrote a really funny parody of it. And they have said, Dylan said in no uncertain terms, you may not do that. Neutron bomb of a lawsuit. And I just don't think that's nice. How old is that song? He's gotten all the juice he's going to get out of that old stone. Come on, let the rest of us have a crack at it. I have one Bob Dylan story, which is okay. a bunch of years ago, uh, I, had, I went to my a Bob Dylan concert and I was sitting, I was backstage and it was before the show and my good friend and guitarist, Jimmy Vivino said, do you want to meet Bob? And I said, uh, I'm not ready to meet Bob. And he went, let's go. And he dragged me into this room and I got shoved into a room and suddenly people parted and I was face to face with Bob Dylan. And it was when he had that little mustache. Sure. You know that little, like a, a villain in a 1920s movie, he had that little mustache. And he looked at me and I said, oh, uh, hello, Mr. Dillon. And he went, I know you from the TV. And just then I was whisked out of the room. And that was my only contact with Bob Dylan. 
I know you from the TV. He said it just like that. That sounds like the beginning of a pretty good song, actually. It should be one of his songs. Uh-oh, what are you doing now? So, the, the, just, this, is, this is, I just want to give you a taste of what America will never hear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Come on. I understand that song parody is the lowest form of human entertainment, but that's damn fine. Yeah. I think Listen you're right here. here. Come on, Bob. So you're this using- This could heal a nation. No, no. You'd have a lot of young people who didn't know what you were talking about. It's got to be a Cardi B song. You've got to- No, I wouldn't. It. I'm on CBS, Conan. It's got to be Dua Lipa, you know? You got to bring it up. You can't be saying, hey, kids, it's time I took down Bob Dylan. That's I'm your I'm not mistake. taking him down. I'm celebrating Bob Dylan. Okay. Yeah. Why are you yelling at me? I don't this know, man. You're a long way. I'm, ang I'm angry at Bob Dylan. I'm sorry. Yeah. And you've got a guitar over your shoulder. And I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm not being fair to you. And I apologize, Conan. Are you crying now? You look like you're crying. Look, I love that in our interview, we got the word out about what a great school Holy Cross is. Holy Cross College. If nothing else. Half my family went to Holy Cross. And they, oh, well, call, it, they call it the cross. I understand. And when I didn't I go to the cross, I had an uncle that was like, what are you doing? The cross isn't good enough for you? It's furious wow. at me. You went to the Vard, right? We call, yeah, people in the know call Harvard the Vard. Yes, sure. yeah. that's what people call it. Yeah, people in the know. Yeah, well, Conan, yes. uh, again, I'm a guest on your show right now. And you're um, a guest on mine. Yeah. Wait, how are we gonna figure out what part of this actually makes it to what? air? How, are we how much figure is this? You know what would be fun? So you, you get both sides and I get both sides. We edit it our way and you edit it your way and we, and we compare later. You know, we're gonna have two completely different interviews. You know what? You're not even gonna be in my version. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna uh, replace you. I'm gonna replace you with stock footage. So, Excellent. Yeah. Of yeah. a monkey washing a, a goose? Yeah, a monkey washing a goose. And you know what? It's gonna go viral the next day. Monkey washes goose on mm -hmm. Conan. We'll be right back with more Conan O'Brien. Is that it? Is that what, is that, is that the idea?